Boom. Particular. Mushroom. Hello everyone, this is Particular Mushroom, and welcome back to another Tricks, Secrets, Glitches, and more. We're dropping anchor in Rico Harbor, a stage filled with bloopers, more bloopers, a giant blooper, and perhaps the best music in the game. Why the bloopers hang out here, though, is beyond me. This stage is a haphazard maze of girders, cages, and boats. While the game tries to place obstacles in your way, the hover nozzle can fly you over most walls and platforms, to the point you may miss some constructs altogether. Like this cage. It only appears in two episodes, and you don't even have to use it, let alone you can just walk right over it. But perhaps, this is the charm of Rico Harbor. Options, options, options. Each time you hop into an episode, you can take a different approach than before. And this video may give you even more things to do. Wall jumps, shortcuts, worthless glitches, we got a boatload. So I'll stop yapping and get right to it. First up again is Secrets, a warehouse that is severely understocked in Rico Harbor. One-ups have almost gone extinct, and even one-third of the blue coins are just floating around. One of the things Rico Harbor does not have going for it. That said, there's one extra life here that's so obscure, I probably would have missed it if it weren't for this lovely comment. Starting in episode 6, there's this Pianta wandering around in a duck floaty? Is that even safe? Wh where are your parents? There was a giant blooper here an episode ago, not to mention the regular ones are bigger than you. For a Pianta with no fear, you sure picked an interesting activity. And here's the kicker. By episode 8, he somehow convinces his friends that duck floaties are cool. I want to know what's so compelling about duck floaties. So I jump into the water and try and talk to them. Nothing. Okay, let's get on this ledge here and... Nada. Is... is he just ignoring me? At this point, talking to these guys seems like some sort of made-up fantasy. But as I think about it, they keep coming to the water's edge, so there's gotta be some way to talk to them. And there it is. You have to meet them at sea level, so now we just need to talk with the other two. Problem is, they come to the shore for a few seconds and then dip. So you gotta wait for them to leisurely paddle all the way around. Wait, 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 wait. You can spin hover? How did I never try this? Anyway, once we talk to these two, we have just this blue one left. And this finally gives a purpose to this random obtuse girder that's bolted onto the bumper of the ship. To talk to this singular Pianta. Upon talking to him, he says, you actually managed to talk to the three Duck Ring Riders? Eh? They named themselves the Duck Ring Riders? Oh my, you're amazing, here you go, this is your reward! And from nowhere, a one-up appears. I'm not sure why I would bother when I can just break this crate right here. But this is probably the most secluded one-up in the game. We'll have to see. And the only appropriate way for me to grab this one up is with a spin hover. And there it is! Wait, what? And here we go! Uh, okay. And we got it! Wait, 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 wait. hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright, here we go! Yeah, there it is, finally! Alright, let's, let's move on, please. There's really only one other Pianta who discusses a secret in Rico Harbor. If you've 100 percent the game, you know that there are coins hidden in this wall here. In Episode 4, The Secret of Rico Tower, Talking to this yellow Pianta drops a subtle hint about it. You still have to connect most of the dots yourself, but hey, it's something. Uh, what's that? And it's gone. Okay, so when you talk to this Pianta, you can see for a few frames that the crane in the background disappears. When the crane is raised up, talking to this Pianta will move the crane in such a way that it's visible. A weird glitch from talking to this guy. Speaking of speaking to Piantas, there are some great stories here. First and foremost, there's the captain who gives you partial hints in every episode. Like in episode 2, where he asks you where the blooper surfing is, except for some reason he's looking up at the sky. 
What's up there, boy? He's also got a great set of lines in episode 7. Weren't you just on top of that steel girder over there? But now you're here, which means... That you wasn't really you. You're you. Wait, who are you? The best, though, or perhaps I should say the worst, starts in episode 5, where he encourages you to defeat Gooper Blooper, mentioning he'll be right here, right here the whole time. You defeat that pesky blooper, and then in episode 6, he calls it a huge cream buff, a complete lightweight, convincing this Piata that he defeated the blooper, that he's a hero. Of course, I'm not too worried about that, given that this Piata saw Mario beat Gooper Blooper the first time, but wow, what a snarky coward. I wouldn't have it any other way. You gotta feel a little bad, though. He notices Rico Tower, he notices the cage shine sprite. He wants to ride bloopers. But it's Mario who handles it every time, and the curse of jealousy starts to sink in. I'll cut the captain some slack, but how about you? Beyond that, we've also got the Gossip Brothers, providing a pessimistic synopsis to each episode. There's the story of the Chuckster, starting off unable to throw you a single meter, but by the last episode can chuck you across the entire harbor. He also inspires his little brother to start chucking people too. <laughs> oh yeah, and watch this. So he throws me. Somehow I hit something and change direction. I bounce on the edge of this platform and boom. Hits the guy. 100 points. Come over here, blooper. Mind the people. Or just pass through them, I guess. Over here. There's this guy who wants to sell some blooper. You got any? What do you mean, you got any? The blooper's eating my face! My favorite, though, is this guy. He's constantly giving excuses as to why he can't work. Gooper blooper, his throat, you name it. In episode 6, he fantasizes about riding bloopers, and Mario calls him out on it. What? I never do any work anyway? Well... That's uncalled for. I wonder if Mario even says anything. Maybe it's just the stoic gaze that pierces deep into the Pianta's heart. Alright, enough of that. Let's move on to exploit slash tricks, as we'll need some for our last secret. What episode of Rico Harbor allows for the highest coin score? You might think the Cage Shine Sprite or Yoshi's Fruit Adventure, but no, the best episode is... Gooper Blooper Breaks Out, Episode 1. It's not straightforward though, as there are some interesting problems here. Also note that above Rico Tower there are 7 coins, but without the rocket nozzle we can only retrieve 2 of them. Besides scouring the sewers and clambering inside each cage, there are 2 notable problems I want to talk about. The first deal has to do with these squishy squids. As much as you suppose bloopers like water, if they fall into the sea, they die. And don't drop any coins. There are a set of bloopers that wander around the fountain or this ship. And not only will they follow Mario to their demise, but if you don't defeat these bloopers first thing, they might be strangely missing when you decide to stomp them. There's also the squids on the girders, and while they don't self-destruct, Failing to stomp on the blooper correctly may still kill the blooper, but plummet you to the sea while the coin above dissipates out of existence. This one blooper is a particular pain, because it's guarded by not one, not two, but three wind freaks. You gotta dodge the nerds, and you gotta jump on the bloop, and then you gotta grab the coin before the nerds come back. And you can't do it first thing because you need to get the bloopers down below first. Next problem is one of the biggest time wasters in the game. Yes, depending on your performance, this may take longer than that stupid Yoshi ride. There are 8 coins over the water that you would normally use a surfing blooper or the turbo nozzle to get. However, we don't have those in episode 1. So the only way to grab these coins is to climb up high on these girders Cascade off and grab a coin, one at a time, or two if you're some sort of sunshine mastermind. Do all this and you can reach 101 coins. This is certainly not the limit, and this is where our exploit comes in. 
If we head over to these colorful crates and set Gooper Blooper free, every box and every blooper will regenerate. Some more coins appear in the sewer and around Gooper Blooper, providing a total of 144 coins. I missed two bloopers, giving me only 142 coins, but that's still higher than any other episode. There's also another interesting artifact of this exploit. If you grab 100 coins to spawn the Shine Sprite, and then break Gooper Blooper free, the 100 coin Shine disappears. This is likely due to the entire stage reloading, as evidenced by the disappearance of the coins over Rico Tower. Thankfully, you can still grab the Big Blooper's Shine Sprite to record your high score. Now remember our roof sprinting trick from last time? Well, as it turns out, it's not so much a roof trick, but a slope trick. We can perform this glitch on any slope, and I guess slopes just don't appear enough that I didn't notice until now. While we're here, there's a crane thing on this boat that we can ride across, but uh, you just walk on the side. I guess they figured the strip was too small, and good players would just do that. There's also the stack of steel beams, two of which are slanted inwards. You can walk into this slant, and when you stop moving, you'll slide backwards. There are a few more tricks we can do on the other boat. Normally we can't water slide on cages, water passes right through. However, we can splash water on the edge of the cage, and so we can hover, pull back, and then dive to water slide. Also, back in episode 1, there's this blooper in the cage. By flipping the panel while the blooper's next to it, we can pop the blooper right out. Oh, blooper shenanigans. Let's continue this with episode 2, Blooper Surf and Safari. There's a current to try and prevent you from getting into the secret box without riding a blooper. But, you can just hover right over it. Now the last time I covered blooper surfing, we talked about how there's a shortcut you can use to lower your time, and by using that shortcut you actually don't need a blooper to complete the race. But there's also a small chain of tricks we can perform to produce something more or less hilarious. Upon entering the secret box, we can quickly switch to the hover nozzle and start hovering. If we move far away enough from the Pianta before landing, he won't strike up a conversation. Now if we leave the starting area, the timer won't start, and what's more, we can still ride a blooper. By heading left at the corner here and then veering right, we can turn our blooper around and collide with another blooper, and do it again. Note that the pink blooper moves too fast to make a U-turn here. After riding every blooper and returning to the Pianta, he'll ask us to show him some super blooper surfing. I can certainly show you some super blooper surfing, but that would require a blooper. Um, yes, well, I, I yearn to stop the dilly-dallying, but there is no blooper for me to get on. Well, uh, this is awkward. I guess we're doing this again. There's also episode 6, Red Coins on the Water. Blooper surfing is back to help us grab 8 red coins but we can just grab the turbo nozzle instead. You will have to hop off the water to grab those coins, but it's better than dying if you have the audacity to barely skim the boat siding. What's more interesting, we can actually collect each red coin with the hover nozzle. You'll be crunching closer to the time limit, but perhaps it's even easier than with the turbo nozzle. Now let's head over to episode 8, Yoshi's Fruit Adventure. In order to wake up Yoshi, we have to head over to the fruit dispenser and receive a durian. That's not a spiky boy. Give me a spiky boy. What's that? That's not a spiky boy. Come on, spiky boy. There's the spiky boy. No, wait, no, don't fall off. Oh, darn it. No, wait, we can save this. We just gotta jump at the right time. There it is. Oh, wait, no, wait, no. Oh, okay. Before we continue, there's an interesting feat you can perform with the durian. All you gotta do is pop one out under the faucet, and then jump on it. <laughs> Alright, let's move on now. Normally, to collect the shine on this episode, Yoshi sprays these fish and they transform into moving platforms. 
You eat the fruit over here, and you do it again. Hold up. Yoshi can sidestep? I should just stop being surprised at this point. Anyway, you don't actually need these fish at all. For whatever reason, there are two grassy ledges that allow Yoshi to platform to these girders. A few more spin jumps and you can reach this platform. You'll have to spray that yellow goop off now, because unfortunately for Yoshi, a spin jump does not garner enough height to reach the next platform. And we have to hop off Yoshi to reach the shine. The next question becomes, can we actually grab the shine without Yoshi? For that, we need to clip right into the glitches. The key is in this thin cage. If a wall is thin enough, then there's usually a way to glitch through with the fruit. But then, part two, how do we get a fruit up there? Well, the best way I know is rocket storage. Much like the trick at the airstrip, we can store some rockets, grab a fruit, and then sidestep off the edge. The only problem is, the fruit from the fruit dispenser dissipates rather quickly. It doesn't seem we can even make it to the platform in time. Thankfully, we have this palm tree, and the fruit from this vine lasts eons. With just two storages, we can blast our way to the cage shine. From here, place the coconut three to four dots away from the cage, grab onto the side, and climb down into the fruit. Mario will promptly freak out and phase right through the cage. All thanks to this one palm tree. Oh hey, this branch of the tree is partially inside the wall here. Oh, I just thought of a ridiculous idea! There's one glitch in Rico Harbor that acts as the linchpin for several other glitches. And that's the crane clip. This crane is broken. You might randomly fall through while standing on it, but that's not the clip we want. We can walk underneath the crane like so and stand right on the edge of the stone. Don't worry about the slope, there's an invisible floor here. As the crane comes down, we automatically clip inside it. By continually jumping as the crane comes down, it'll push you into the floor and out of bounds. A whole new world opens up to us, and I can't help but wonder if without this broken crane, we'd be locked out of all sorts of excellent glitches. So after searching for a bit, there is at least one more, but the maneuver is a lot less reliable. If we hover into these wooden planks with Mario's head just above them, we'll clip inside. We can't clip into the wall just yet, but as Mario's feet appear, a wall clip is possible. Almost immediately after, Mario pops up on solid ground. So there's a split second where we can release the hover nozzle and fall into the floor. It works, but is far less reliable than the crane clip, especially if these boxes are gone. Upon falling to the floor, you'll have to consistently jump to prevent a sudden death. However, starting episode 3 or 4, using the crane clip will plop you in water. While swimming, we are impervious to the obnoxious insta-death. You can, of course, still drown. There are also invisible boundaries of water and air. Crossing these invisible boundaries may freeze Mario in place, and if you end up like this, you're forced to soft reset the game. We'll talk about this boundary glitch a little later, but for now, stay off the floor when crossing the boundary. Now let's tie up my loose end and make our way to the out of bounds branch in a sort of mini challenge. Grab the rocket nozzle and perform the crane clip. Swim to the bottom of the sea and float under the sea bed. We're heading to this wall and don't hit the stone walls or the game might freak out on you. The air water boundary is a little bit behind this wall giving you space to swim upward before crossing the boundary. The next task is to locate the tree, and using the rocket nozzle you can land in a generously large pool of water. You should be able to rocket jump on the portion of the tree still OOB. From there, jump forward and rocket jump right on top of the OOB branch. I was a bit worried about this, but turns out there's no collision detection on the ground when out of bound, so you just phase right through it. Now let's check out those other OOB glitches. We can swim directly under a column, rocket jump, and then this happens. Disappointing. We can swim inside the ships and let your nozzle float around like some sort of ghost. You can't grab the grate on the opposite side, by the way. We can also trap Mario in this cylindrical space. Again, Mario can clearly fit through the bars and the game's not having any of your logic. If you pop in here on episode 2, the loading zone for the secret box is above the water. We can stand underneath all we want, and then if we jump up... 
This area also has an interesting artifact in Episode 1. The goop cuts off abruptly at the edge of the map, which makes sense. But then there are these weird bubbles. I can't think of any reason for this, and even if you're outside of them, you still take damage. There's also these weird moving shadows. It seems to have something to do with the water texture, but those shadows don't appear in bounds. This is the closest Sunshine has gotten to being creepy. Now let's clip into Rico Tower, which brings up another obstacle in our way. When we perform the crane clip, the sewer sits right behind us. There's no way to get past it other than to go all the way around. A minor inconvenience, but frustrating if you forget about it or keep dying on the way to your destination. With a good rocket jump, we can plant firmly inside the tower. The camera doesn't really want to get inside, but we can put the camera inside of the columns. There's some green things in there. What's that supposed to be? Moss? But enough of this, you want to know if we can reach the gallery, right? Well, rocket jumping at the peak of your regular jump barely misses the mark frustrating and it almost seems impossible. But then, another hidden mechanic that I've never had to use before comes into play. While charging the rocket nozzle, you can spin jump. Whoopee, whoopee. What other spin moves do I not know about? With a well-timed spin jump, we can reach the gallery. Now, upon walking into the small room here, you are trapped. The loading zone is not there. As a consolation prize, switch to first-person view, and look at that. What a view! Could you imagine being stuck here, watching the cranes move back and forth, hour after hour? They don't serve any purpose, do they? Now we also use the crane clip to walk underwater. You may notice walking is a bit slow. Trying to water slide doesn't work. The floor is saturated, even while walking underwater. To add to the oddity, sometimes the effect wades more than knee-deep. Yeah, an entire water layer underwater. The level varies widely, and it seems to follow no rhyme or reason. But inspecting this phenomena proves that this glitch within a glitch follows one particular rule. If we swim over this yellow submarine, we all live in we immediately sink to the floor. This vehicle negates the water layer, perhaps because you can raise it above sea level. Here's where the explanation comes in. First, walk off the submarine. Now grab the side of the submarine. Notice something yet? Okay, jump off the submarine. And jump even higher off the submarine. The height of the second water layer is equivalent to Mario's height when he glitches underwater. And it's not just the submarine, it works on this ledge too. There are a few other quirks here as well. For one, we can swim right underneath the goop without taking damage. You know, just sort of hanging out. We also don't take damage from the jellyfish things. Oh, hello. You're in Mario's head. We can also spray them and get a good look at their squashed faces. They're fine. They're just hanging out. Let's move over to these fish. Spraying one normally launches it like a home run hit. However, try that underwater, and they're already underwater, so nothing happens. They struggle through your tightening grip, inching slowly along. However, there's a small delay before they jump out of the water, and so right there, you can lock them down in the same spot. Add to that the saturated ground, and you can do this indefinitely. Alright, time for a mini challenge. Hit the fishy onto the helipad. 10 points! Perfect 10! Launching these fish regularly is pretty fun too, since they actually ricochet off walls. Bing bing bing! Oh no! I've trapped the fish in a cycle of pain and torture! Poor fishy, I didn't mean it, I'm so sorry! Oh. Okay, he's dead. Let's take a quick look at some of the smaller glitches and tricks in Rico Harbor. There's this. That's enough of that. If we spin jump into a grate, we get about 10 frames of something silly. <laughs> This happens every time, I don't know why I think it's so funny. We can also glitch into this smokestack. There are a few spots along the cylinder, like right there, that are less than stable. You can tell you're hitting the right spot because Mario bounces around a little bit. And if you hit that spot right at the top of the stack, you'll clip on through. 
Take in the nice kaleidoscope view of the sun. Mmm, good old vitamin D and sunburn. We can also clip into these columns. If we hover into the column, as Mario's head rises over the abacus, we can clip into the wall. And from here, we just need a precise ground pound in the middle of the column. It's as simple as that, although execution might take a little more effort. Now whoever bothered to label these is wasting their time. Oh, forget it. This whole jungle gym of metal is a waste of time. Let's be honest. Uh, somebody's got to think about where the tax money's going. Anyway, these platforms bounce you nice and high, but we can actually grab the side of these trampolines and just stand on them. Because standing's a lot more fun than bouncing! Heh. <laughs> I cannot be sure what Nintendo's logic was, but they had a strange blooper inking to make sure we could not wall jump inside the narrow section of the big yellow cage. A wall jump on the base doesn't get you enough height. The red ring is slippy slidey, and a trampoline bounce as well as a rocket jump prevents you from wall jumping. They almost foolproofed it. Almost. Because they didn't anticipate rocket storage. Because it's not technically a rocket jump, you can wall jump after launching way too high. I know it's not too interesting to look at, but you gotta appreciate the technical dependencies required to accomplish such a menial task. And now you can wall jump forever inside this little octagon. There's also another rocket storage trick with Gooper Blooper. First, we need to get over there and... Hey Bloop, your spin attack... It's not working. Let's take off those silly tentacles so we can perform this trick. Now, the spin attack is really not going to do anything. The game checks where the boss music should play based on where you touch the ground. So by using rocket storage, we can fly to the other end of the harbor while the boss music is jamming out. Oh, I almost forgot, in episode 1, you can use Gooper's tentacle to clip inside the colorful crates. It's pretty easy, actually. Just grab and go into the green or silver crate. There's no blooper in here. We can jump into the above crates, but not the one the tentacle is coming out of. We can also pull the tentacle quite far with this glitch. Now let's dive into what I'm calling the frozen in water glitch and we'll need the boundary glitch to help us out. Here we go! When swimming from water to air like I mentioned earlier, there are two distinct possibilities. One, you pop out of the water and move around like normal. Or two, you get stuck, unable to move, almost frozen in space. What happens is a bit volatile, but generally speaking, case two happens a lot more as you swim farther downward. If case 2 does happen, there are three more outcomes folded up inside that. The most common result is to be frozen in a jump animation. You can rocket jump out of this, but otherwise it's time to soft reset the game. If that doesn't happen, Mario will probably be pushing against an invisible wall. If you jump here, you're back in an all too familiar position. However, you also have the option to press B. If you press B, you'll teleport to the depths of the deep blue to die after a split second. This is the absolute bottom of the world, and if you're prepared, you can flash the camera upward to get a glimpse of Rico Harbor. By now you're wondering what that third outcome is, and it's a tough nut to crack. Like trying to clear Pachinko. Blindfolded. See, the first time I triggered the frozen and water glitch was on accident. It caught me completely by surprise, and I flipped off the couch, scrambling to press the capture button. Flashback recording was off due to past problems, and so I was left with this screen. What is this, and how did I get here? Oh, and I decided to jump, so you know how that works out. The glitch is not so easy to perform, and it doesn't help that a failure may result in death. Or even worse, a soft reset. After triggering the glitch a few more times, I think I figured it out. No money back guarantee though, you're getting these for free anyway. So here's our boundaries. What I knew was the glitch happened while I was on the bottom, pressing B. However, spamming B on the floor slows your speed down to that of a blooper on land, 
This triggers the other cases. The key is to start about halfway down, hit A to stroke forward, and then spam B, so you hit the floor right as you cross the boundary. You are now frozen in a swimming animation. Free to look up and observe the harbor. You're stuck in this animation, but note the game doesn't actually think you're in water, so there's no air meter and you can deplete your water tank. That's worthwhile in my book, but the true magic happens when you press B. Every time you press B, Mario will descend a small, constant amount into the blue abyss. Not too much changes, but the fractured view of Rico Harbor gets farther and farther away. You can descend a staggering number of times, at least 100. Eventually, you reach the bottom of the world, and well, goodbye. Recollect yourself and let's head to Rico Tower in Episode 4, where you can actually teleport to the secret box. You can do some rocket storage, but when I started this episode, I didn't see much else to do here. Um, where's Mario? Is the, is the game broken? Oh, there he is. How's the freefall going, Mario? Just hanging out? Okay, I need to stop saying that. You, you know what these platforms look like? A crankshaft. Yeah? Maybe? It was a good attempt, right? I mean, besides the Turbo Box Challenge, there's not much else to do here. Good Cooper Blooper, pause the video! Okay, now back up a bit, a little more, and... Yeah, that's a glitch, all right. So I'm thinking we'd have to use the Turbo Nozzle to break through this peg, but no, the left side of this peg has no collision. Like the peg's been cut in half, but the game wants to believe the other half's still there. This only holds true for the green peg, but it also works on every one of these spinning platforms. Even the giant one. No resistance, no nothing, just walk right through. The platforms in my head are spinning now. What other glitches do the twirly whirlies hide? Unfortunately, that's pretty much it for the green peg, unless you count this anomaly. Janky physics. We've got three other pegs to check out. If you position yourself under a peg and then hover, you'll phase right through it. Position in the same spot, walk into the peg, and the same thing will happen. Here's the catch, it doesn't work on the blue peg. We can still hover through, but instead of walking through, we get a flash of stars before getting kicked into the void. This is our best chance to clip into the platform. Face the blue peg counterclockwise and walk into it. Hold that control stick forward and as soon as you see stars, hover. The moment you pop out of the peg, stop hovering. This pushes Mario down slightly and as quick as you can, hover again. You'll clip into the spinning platform. Enjoy the fleeting moment before your hover drains and the void swallows your life. As you might expect, these glitches work exactly the same on the giant platform. The platform is even large enough that we can manage a small glimpse of the inside. And now, I've got a bit of a disappointing story to share. Here we are at the Blooper Surfing Safari. I found an infinite belly flop you could perform by hovering into this wall and pressing B. Boom, now you can just keep flopping around as long as you don't hit the wall. The two slopes push Mario in opposite directions, and so you can actually gain height from belly flopping. I found this spot where pressing B pushes you underwater, but because the floor is right there, Mario doesn't sink and you can just spam B to keep making splashes. I even found this spot where the blooper gets stuck in the corner. What's wrong with all these? They're not wall clips. <sighs> this is perhaps my most sought after boundary break in Rico Harbor. I can tell you right now there are some fantastic glitches hiding behind the borders of this secret box. However, these walls are under lock and key. There's no hole, no siphon, no sidestep magic. The developers even took out collision detection from just the backside of this pipe, so we can't wall jump up there. We're even locked out of the turbo and rocket nozzle because they don't appear until episode 3. Considering how broken the rest of Sunshine is, I am astounded at how stable this secret box is built. Well, at least we can clip through this box. 
However, let's just pretend that for some reason, somehow, we were able to get a hold of a rocket nozzle. And just so there's no misunderstanding, I'm gonna put this sign right here. If we have the rocket nozzle, we can use rocket storage to launch into the air, revealing that the secret box is actually a box floating in space. We can store three charges to vault over the tall, invisible wall in the secret box. Much like Rico Harbor, we can swim around outside the walls, but hitting any boundary pushes Mario down to a lower, invisible layer. Return from here is unlikely. Even with the spin jump, a rocket jump still misses the lowest elevation. If we walk to the edge of the map in one direction, we hit an invisible wall where we can freeze Mario in air momentarily. Walking along in another direction, Mario can actually fall off a ledge. This seems to be the end of our plumber, and yet, there's another layer, way, way far down. From here, there really is no return, so hit that exit area once you've enjoyed this very particular view. Now, if any of you want to figure out how to clip through the walls without switching around the loading zones, that'd be fantastic. Hey, come on, get off. Get off! I gotta try and wrap up the video here. This is not working. Okay, fine. Just stay here. I don't care. So that's it for Rico Harbor, people. This video took forever, I know. But I will only make a video if the script is sharp like Bowser's shell, which it wasn't for a while. I'm trying to think of a series I could start that would last about five minutes to get videos out more often. So let me know if you have any ideas. Next up should be Serena Beach? Is that it? Most of you were fine if I mispronounced the names, but I want to try and pronounce them properly. We're just gonna have a problem when we get to that location, and we'll tackle that beast when we get there. So it looks like I have a Twitter now, so follow me for all kinds of particular updates. I'm shocked by the number of people who wanted a Discord, and I can announce that I am planning for one. The only deal is, a public Discord absolutely needs moderators and such, so I can't rocket jump right into it. I have more to say, but let's leave it at that for now. As always, you can comment what you think needs improving, what your favorite part of the video was, or how we're gonna crack that darn secret box. Have a goober blooper day, and I will see everyone later. Have a goober blooper day? What was I thinking?